to speak to you about finding the diamond in the rough or cutting the clutter out of your social media life and indeed out of your life as well. Um, today, you're going to have a chance to hear amazing speakers. If I look at the guys sitting in the front rows here, uh, I'm very sad to have missed most of you this morning. Unfortunately, work uh, was more pressing. But why am I here? Um, I feel today there's a lot going on about media and and I find often there's this misconception about the amount of work it takes and how much time you can spend trawling for crap uh, and to make money out of that. But, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. We have the leaders in digital here. They are going to tell you amazing things today and you're going to have so much written down, so many tweets to follow and a whole lot to do. But how do we get through that and turn it into a plan which really benefits the rest of your life? So that's what we're talking about today. So, I'm not the guy who's graphs, stats, uh, there'll be none of that in my presentation. Um, I'm really excited to more of that this afternoon, but for the next 15 minutes, I'm all yours, and all we're going to do is talk about more general stuff. Are we on? Don't you love it? Such a beaut. Diamond in the rough. So, there's a lot of social media fatigue, a lot of clutter, there's so much we can do on our daily lives. My time, and my message today, is time and pressure will get you success. Just like forming any diamond, time and pressure. That is absolutely vital to success. My personal journey and my personal message, uh, I'm a guy who receives, fortunately, I have beautiful sponsors for the races I do. So as an example, I get about 50,000 rands worth of Puma stuff a year, but it clutters my environment amazingly. There's all this free stuff, gear, and, blah, blah, and how do I solve that? So as part of an exercise last year, I tried to get down to 100 personal items, material things, and that was it that I owned. And it was amazing how much free I, I, I felt and what was available. And I work with a, a charity in Stellenbosch called songo.info where they're taking township kids and giving them bicycles and getting them life skills and that thing. So I deliver about eight to ten black bags full of clothing and things to them a year. Um, and that is a part of clearing the junk. At work, exactly the same thing. We, we are an amazing company at New Media Labs. We build backend systems for the banks and for the insurance houses. And I work with a development team of 12 really smart guys, uh, very ADD guys, so we have to have a lot of systems in place for them to cut work time uh, and to limit the amount of time they're actually spending online, doing social stuff, watching TweetDeck like a 12-year-old girl at a Twilight premiere, that kind of stuff we're trying to avoid. Uh, so life and all of that. Social media fatigue, something I spoke about with, uh, with Mike and with Melissa yesterday as well, is an absolute thing. Where do we find true value, absolute true value, rather than intrinsic value, in social media? Intrinsic value is cost 10 rand, sell it for 10 rand. That's not the stuff I'm interested in, and it's not the stuff that we like to sell. We like to sell the stuff that your cash is not the same amount as what you put in. So, intrinsic value, absolutely massive. If you can build something which you can sell on intrinsic value, rather than what you made for it, absolutely golden, fantastic. Go about it that way. Then. True value, where are we? This is a good sign. All the girls. You see, someone tweeted earlier there were lots of girls in the crowd. So, I'm going to grab a photo of a baby and put it in there. That is social media fatigue. Everybody is sick and tired. Where do I find the value? How am I going to go about it? You know, these things are on the top of everybody's minds. And um, this is what we'll be talking about today. This is one of my favorite brands in the world. It's called Rafa. It's out of the UK. Very, very high end. Cycling equipment, they project a lifestyle, which is this, do the work, they're a big fan of the races, which I like, which are these like crazy 400 kilometer one day bike rides. Um, you will pay 3,000 Rand for a Rafa cycling shirt, 3,000 Rand for a set of shorts, and they are growing at 1,500% a year, purely because they get the message correctly, and the value is incredible. When it comes to doing the work, work is key. You look at any key person who's giving a speech here today, who is successful, they have done the work. I guarantee you they've worked harder and longer than you can imagine you ever have. Incredible. 10,000 hours, if you don't know about Malcolm Gladwell, go read it. Just do yourself a favor, it counts for everything. The races I compete in are not 10 seconds, 10 minutes. The world record for my favorite race is seven hours and 45 minutes, to give you an example. That is work. Those guys are training 35 to 40 hours a week. If you're not working 40 hours a week, and I'm not talking about wasting your time, uh, on tweet deck or surfing around. If you're not working 40 hours a week, you're never going to get ahead of the curve. Because somewhere, 
in a more developing country, there's someone who's as smart as you, who's willing to work for half of what you want and for double the amount of time. So be smart, cut the clutter, cut the crap, you know, all that stuff. If you think you're wasting your time, absolutely, you are. Okay, what's next? Big pep talk. Okay, so we're coming with social media fatigue. Three of my favorite companies are Facebook yesterday. Big changes, massive. Everybody hates it for 20 minutes. It's a free service. Changes happen. It fights the social media fatigue in a massive way. Everybody was back on. Love Twitter. Keeps growing. They let people influence whatever is happening on Twitter. Replies, DMs, photos, all these things were user-generated, user-suggested things which came up. And then Instagram. Instagram. Anybody using Instagram as an example? Love Instagram. They don't even have a website. If you don't have an iPhone, they seriously don't give a fuck about you. So, and they have eight or nine, ten million people who are currently using Instagram. It's just following Instagram 2.0 out this week. Absolutely amazing company. Fantastic. So, where do we find this value? Where? I mean, you're spoon fed everything. Generally, not. Everything's free. You can find it somewhere. There's a map, da, 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 whatever you want. So where is the value? How do you find it as a brand and as your personal brand? I'm not going to tell you, and nobody today who you're going to hear is going to give you an absolute map and a direction for the way you should be going. That is your personal journey. And that is the most beautiful thing you will go through. And that is why I, like myself, I like to go on these crazy adventures where uh, a lot of light comes to me and a lot of fantastic feeling and um, it's very touchy-feely but I come back and I've always got a great creative space and uh, that's when the best creations come. And we're going to talk about your brand as a brand. Uh, if you're positioning a brand, you're trying to do a brand, generally there's a couple things you'll be doing incorrectly which is why your brand is not a success. A, you're not letting your users influence your brand. The best brands in the world are currently switching to listening actively all the time, you know? And that is one of the biggest things you can do. Listening, massive value. Most brands, really, missing the point completely. If you give a semi-solid fuck about your clientele, like, they're there, I care about you, you're not going to get any more value out of, your, out of your market than by actually just listening and caring about them. We're talking about authenticity and the awesome Shoes he's got on. That's the number one selling shoe in the history of the world. 800 million pairs of Converse have been sold. It's absolutely authentic. There have been a million copies. You know, try and come up with something which is unique. Another example. Smell like a man, man. <laughs> Be authentic. Thank you. You made my point exactly. And then one for the guys and one for the girls. Be transparent while we're at it as well. Have people uh, give them the opportunity to have a look into your brand and see what goes on there. So, in this great moving momentum, this blog, which is social media, I know that finding momentum is the most difficult thing, especially in a market where trends change all the time, as we've seen today. Uh, there's two main trends, which I can only really pick up on. One, obviously, is gingers. And um, the other one, fantastically, is love. Show a little bit of love for your clients, for your brand, for your value, for your staff, for your employees really care about them. It goes a long way. We incentivize our staff to go to gym. We incentivize them. They get parking allowances. They're going to park outside. That money comes for free. There's a whole lot of stuff. We incentivize people, and that is fantastic. Let me figure out. My community at, Earth, at uh, Urban Ninja don't like to be mollycoddled. They like to be told they need to get out of bed, go for an hours run in the morning, and they like to live vicariously through me. I work 40 hours a week, some weeks. Twice a year, I add 30 hours of training on top of that, and they want to see if it's possible, you know? Push the limits, see what's possible. If you're doing it authentically, people will watch, listen, and want to be a part of what you're doing. Are you the specialist? Every single person here that I can see has something which is unique within you, you know? Work it out, try different things. You may not be a blogger, maybe you need to write uh, coding tutorials, make GoPro videos, or if you're Richard Mulholland, make a lifestyle out of mildly insulting people all day. I'm not the matrix guy, you know? If you want to ask uh, other people about that, there are enough experts here, I'm sure you'll catch them during tea time. Those are the fantastic things to do. So, lastly but least, least, time and pressure. Your two most valuable commodities that you have, work. If you think it's going to take you 100 hours, think again. It's going to take you a couple thousand hours. At work, we're halfway through developing something new at the moment. 4,000 hours of dev work have gone into it. We added it up yesterday already. So if you think 
One hour a day, every day of the week is enough. Forget about it. Try again. Thank you very much.